Yeah, well, when I was a kid, uh, I had a cousin who played drums. Uh, first cousin, in fact. And he's the only kid in the neighborhood who had a set of drums. He's the only one who could afford it. So uh, every day, about two or three o'clock in the afternoon, he, he had a grocery store, as folks did. And he lived like right next door to, to the uh, store. And he'd go over there and work a couple hours on drums, playing, you know, just himself and records, listening to big band stuff. And I'd go by there from time to time and sit down and listen to him, watch him play. And then he said, you want to play a couple? Yeah, I'll play. And I didn't know anything about big band music that much, you know. But uh, after you do it a while, you, just like anything else, you, get to, you, could, you learn to do it. So, And that's how we, all of us got started listening to other bands, you know, because we didn't have any money to buy any instruments of any kind, you know. So he was the luckiest one of the bunch. Yeah, well, uh, I did that for years. I worked to cocktail lounges, bars. Uh, you just, uh, what you do, you, you go in and whatever, wherever you're playing, learn something. You try to learn something. Whatever it is, you try to learn something. So uh, and that's, we work these bars or whatever. So you'll learn a little bit of something everywhere you go. And uh, I, I finally went over to the Hayride and uh, I was not what they call a country drummer, you know. Uh, so I had to learn to play like they felt, you know, so stick in a brush, pretty quiet, no loud noises, you know. And that's what I did for another 10, 15 years, you know, just learn to play quiet and easy for them, you know. Uh, hardly any foot pedal, because they, they themselves didn't like bass drums, the artists. And in fact, they couldn't sing with a bass drum. And they, they, most of them sang out of meter. You know what I mean by that? They have a 2-4 bar here, a 3-4 bar there. And just, so I stayed out of the way. I, I wouldn't play the bass drum. I played up here, you know, straight as I could. So if it had to turn the beat over, you don't you could turn it over without worrying about that bass drum. So that's I learned. That's how I learned to play. Just turn the turn the beat around for them. That way, nobody sounded like a like a train wreck out there. You know, they had a big. It was a very sheer curtain. It wasn't a very really heavy curtain. And uh, when it first started, they said well, you have to play back there. I said, well, how come? You know. Well, you know, we got country artists, and they don't know anything about drums and one thing and another. I said, well, okay. I went back, well, I'll stay back there two or three weeks, you know, until Elvis come on, you know. He said, well, bring the boy out here, you know. We need to hear him, what he's doing. So he was the one who really got us on stage. Elvis, he said, let, let him play, heck, you know. And uh, after that, then they, everybody wanted drums in. Oh, that sounds really good, guys. Uh, you want to play with me? No, I'm tired. And then I got tired, I didn't want to do it. <laughs> he walked in, and I knew he was, and he had, uh, these funny clothes, I call them funny clothes, you know, peg pants and the belts and the shirts and ties and everything. And uh, Scott had come over and said, hey, uh, we're going to do a couple of tunes and I, you, you want to work with us? I said, yeah, uh, that's why I'm here. So I think they did That's Right. He didn't have a couple of songs anyhow, so That's Right, Mama, and maybe one more. And it worked out good, you know, for what he wanted. So he come in a couple of weeks later, same thing, same thing every week. I said, yeah, I'll be glad to do it for you. And he said, hey, we're going to go to Texas for three or four days. You want to go? I said, yeah, I'll go with you. So I went over there and we come back to Hayride again that Saturday night. He said, DJ, we're going to go back to Memphis. He said, we don't have nothing booked. We may never get another job in our lives. You know, just like that. He was serious. I said, oh, you'll get something. Don't worry about it. And uh, he said, if I do, I'll call you. And if you, you know, you want to work with us a while. I said, yeah. So I was about a week or so late. He called. He said, uh, hey, we've got four more days out in Texas. you want to go? I said, heck yeah, I'll go with you. So it started kind of gradually. Built up to that point, and then I, then I was a regular after a while, you know. He said, we're going to do this Heartbreak Hotel for these friends of mine, May Axton, you know, and them. And uh, we did. Got a good cut on it, finally. And uh, Chet Atkins, the guitar player, everybody knows Chet, he was playing rhythm guitar. And so Scott says, Chet, you want to play lead? And he said, your turn, boy, you got it. You, you have to play. And uh, Scotty did, he did a great job, and but he was, he was afraid to play in front of Chet, like everybody else is, Who, who's not, you know. Uh, the guy's a genius on guitar, so, and you got a little guy up there trying to play something, and it scares you to death, you know. You just, you don't want to get out there and play. 
but he did a good job. Good job. Scotty Bill had joined him first. They were the original guys. Well, he kept, they kept asking for a raise, for a raise, for a raise, you know. And uh, you know, they never did get it, so they decided just to quit. And they did, just for a couple of days. And we went up to Washington, up to that part of the country. He called them all back. Well, I say all, Scotty and Bill back. And uh, I never did quit, actually, I just stayed on. So uh, they, they, they did a few adventures. They, and we were doing movies by then, so uh, we'd go out and work about two weeks for a movie, track, go home. When he finished up, we'd go back out there and do the same thing over and over. He, he, kept, he was doing about three pictures a year, so that made it easier. We just stay home most of the time and do pictures. And we were probably the first band to do anything in the round, as they called it. And uh, he looked good, he was singing good, and that, that little segment that we did, you know, in the round, it really looked good with it for everybody I'm talking about. Not just him, but everybody looked good. Everybody was playing good, so we had a good time doing that one. We really did. Was well, then he called, later they called, and he was going to open in Vegas. Well, we had been to Vegas once, and we didn't like it then. So I said, I don't want to go to Vegas, you know. And Scott said, I don't either. The Jordanaires said, I don't either. We don't want to go back out there. So we just all quit at the same time. I come by, when I, I heard, you know, you get you hear it through the grapevine that Elvis was in town. And Elvis was in town, everybody knew it, you know. So I went by the studio and seen him a couple of times, you know. It was hard as hell to get in, first of all. They didn't let anybody in there. I just lucked out. I knew some of the policemen that were there were security, you know. So yeah, I'm going in. He's, all, he's sitting in there doing nothing. So I'd go and talk to him for an hour or so, and I'd leave. And, oh, he's the nicest guy in the world. Uh, I don't know where these people got these ideas of well, he's a bad guy, but he was not bad. Uh, he'd do anything in the world for you, give you anything he had. Uh, uh, the guys were with him every day. Uh, we, we, we wasn't with him every day. They, they had houses, they bought them cars, or they, whatever they wanted that he bought for them. Anything they got now, he bought it. So how can you beat a guy like that, you know? Don't be cruel. Too hard, that's true. We're going to do this Don't Be Cruel. And actually, uh, it was actually Elvis playing the back beat on the back of a guitar case, uh, there had been a leather case put over the top of this guitar, and uh, it was a unique sound. Uh, we had, uh, and back then, you know, we didn't have all the gadgets they got now, so we was always looking for something different to put on a record. And he come up with that thing. He said, "What do you think, guys? I said, you better play that then." And uh, he loved the sound of it. I, I bet you, I bet you, there's probably eight or ten records you'll hear that guitar, and he's got it up here sometimes, like this. And it sounds like a, a bongo or congo player, uh, some of the older records. And it, it, it was really a good sounding record. All those records were good. I liked them all. And he played great rhythm, in fact. He played better rhythm than anybody else in the studio. He played great rhythm. He yeah. sang it, played it at the same time, yeah. They don't do that anymore. Uh, they'll do one cut and six months later come back. Well, by then you didn't lost the idea of the whole song. You just lost it. And, uh, he didn't like the overdub in the first place, so we did everything live. Right then and there. Stay out of the way of him, see? I, mean, I knew he wasn't going to get lost. I could. Uh, but he, he never, I never seen anybody get, get, he couldn't get lost. Don't ask me why. But he never did. Oh, we did this song. It was such a big hit. I don't know how many millions it, it did sell after it was finally shut down. It had Don't Be Cruel and Hound Dog back to back. And it's like 38 million or something like that, you know. The boy couldn't hardly get arrested, could he? But he, he was very good at what he was doing. He had a unique ear uh, to whatever he wanted to do, that's what he did. Uh, we had a lot of times the producers, they'd get upset with him, you know. They said, look, I'll do it, don't worry about it, guys. We'll, we'll catch up. He was always worried about burning up too much studio time and have to pay the musicians over time. He said, it's okay, my money, let it go. And they did. And it's a good thing they did. Straight ahead. Like the same old thing. One, two, four. 
basically all the same pattern all the way through it, you know, without getting funny, you know. This is a one and four. And this is downbeat actually. So that's what you go by. Hi, right, this is DJ Fontana. Now we're going to do Scotty Moore's, one of his favorite tunes is Don't Be Cruel. And uh, he's got the four bar intro, and I'm coming in four bars later and be all everybody's. Uh, but uh, it was such a great song, and it didn't le need a lot of anything, hardly. And uh, that's the way we cut it, just straight ahead, no a lot of funny noises, no nothing, just a good song. It's one of those type of songs you could just do forever. And it, 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 it'll always be the same. You know I can be found Sitting home all alone You can't come around At least please telephone Don't be cruel To a heart that's true Baby Something I might have said Please let's forget the past The future looks bright ahead Don't be cruel To a heart that's true I don't want no other love Baby, it's just you I'm thinking of Don't stop thinking of me So don't be cruel to a heart. 